Good morning, good morning. Friday morning today, hallelujah. And um, it's a good day. I love getting to sit out here and uh, get to be with you today. Join. Today we're going to pray together. If you have 25 minutes, grab your Bible. We're talking about pressing in for personal revival. Hallelujah. Personal revival. It's great to pray for national revival. And actually today we're going to be, we're going to pray and uh, we're going to look at the word first. But if you've got 25 minutes to look at the word, it's going to, it's going to empower you. It's like eating a really good meal before getting into your day. And uh, then we're going to pray. But um, like I was saying, I just love getting to be out here. I love watching the sun come up and uh, you'll probably see it uh the countenance of my face change in a few minutes as the sun comes up. Praise God. My name is Vincent. In case you don't know me, I have a beautiful wife named Jessica. Three amazing kids. Our website is thejesustours.com. And uh, we love God. We love the Word of God. And we're passionate about getting the Word of God out and getting it to people. God have mercy. God loves people. And he wants all to be saved and to come to the knowledge of the truth. God is a passionate God. And we're passionate as well. And uh, that's us. You can visit our website. Go to all of our um, social media things and share, follow, subscribe. And the reason that we invite you to do that is to just increase the reach of the Word of God. That's what it's all about. Increasing the reach of the Word. I don't know where you live. But, you know, here in America, obviously Christianity is well known, but more and more darkness is, is, is trying to creep in and take over. And, but there are nations around the world where darkness has reigned for a long time. And even the hope of hearing the gospel is, is nil, is very small. And so our heart is to reach people that don't, don't have access to the Word of God. So if you'd help us by sharing this, that would be awesome. Hallelujah. Let's jump in today. Let's pray. And I want to share some powerful things with you. And then we're going to pray today for this nation and for this generation. Father, thank you for this day. It's the day you made. We're going to rejoice and be glad in it. It's a great day. Hallelujah. And you're ready to win. And we jump in with you together uh, today to win. Lord, give us your heart. Give us your mind. May we know how you think. May we see how you see. May we have uh, your thoughts. May we think like you. And may we pray like you. May we live for you. And I pray for anybody and everybody watching today, Lord, that you would touch their lives in a powerful way. Lord, grip their hearts uh, with the things of God. May the spirit of the fear of the Lord touch their lives. And uh, open up our hearts today. Open up our eyes. In Jesus' name, amen. One of the most powerful ways to experience revival in your life, and actually I'm talking about sustained revival, a lot of people experience God in a church service. They go in and they experience God, but they don't, they don't have the fire of God living in them every day. And one of the most powerful ways to experience and actually live a life of revival is to get the mind of Christ, get the purposes of God. And when the purposes of God invade our lives, take over how we think, it transforms us. And His passion becomes our passion. His fire becomes our fire. His life becomes our life. Hallelujah. So if, you really wanna, if we really want to tap into revival in a powerful way, we would tap into the mind of Christ. And we talked a little bit about that yesterday, going after the mind of Christ, determining to get the mind of Christ. And, and last yesterday we talked about... Um, Good morning, Miss Kimberly. Yesterday we talked about uh, going after the mind of Christ, but a really powerful thing to be open to and opening up ourselves to is even loving his reproof, loving his correction. And I'm not talking about him beating you up. He doesn't beat people up. He corrects us with the words of our mouth, uh, the words of his mouth. And when he does, he's attempting to empower us to see things how he sees them to change our thinking and when 
if we'll allow him to change our thinking, it'll actually allow him to transform us. And when he transforms us, then he's giving us a greater capacity to, to carry him, to carry his presence, praise God. So we're talking about, we talked about determining to get the mind of Christ, making his priorities my priorities. And I want to talk about one of his priorities today. And uh, again, reason being is if we'll get his priorities, and we're going to pray today, and if we'll pray the prayers that he loves to pray, glory to God, then he will fill us. When we pray prayers that are, you know, selfish, full of selfish ambition, pride, covetousness, um, dead, he doesn't come and fill those prayers. And so one of the sure ways of encountering revival and having a revival flow through us, because that's really what it is, it's it's a river flowing through us, it's, a, it's God flowing through us, is tapping into how He thinks, what He thinks, making His priorities my priorities, and praying what He wants to pray. When we pray what He wants to pray, then we're, we are sure to encounter His presence. Um, Kenneth Hagin used to call it, you know, hitting a gusher. When you hit a gusher, you experience God. Hallelujah. And when we pray selfish prayers, you're not going to experience God very much. You, you might experience that He's there and He's like, yes, okay, I got it, I love you, I got it. But it's when we really tune into His will, His heart, His vision, His wishes, and we start prophesying those things, praying those things, and living for those things, that His fire can really live big in us and go after it. Praise God. So here's what I want to talk about today in making his priorities our priorities is I want to talk about kids. Hallelujah. I want to talk about kids. And I'm just going to read a bunch of scriptures. Then I'm going to read Psalm 22 and that's going to be our prayer. And, and you're going to see it is a big, big prayer we're going to pray today. We're going to pray one of God's prayers. We're going to pray God's heart because I know that if we'll pray His prayers, He hears us. And if we know He hears us, then we know we have the petition of our hearts. But it's also, it's what He wants. And we're going to pray it in faith like, we talk, like we've talked about. You have to come to God believing that He is and He's a reward of those who diligently seek Him. We're going to pray His heart, His prayers. Hallelujah. So let's start. Let me just read a bunch of scriptures about kids. Somebody say kids. Kids are on God's heart. Kids are one of the are are maybe the most important people group in this earth and uh, God cares about them for a lot of reasons one is because they need so much help and so uh, just like your kids you care about them you want to watch over them you want to protect them uh, it hurts God's heart to see um, babies and children born into a world where they have very little power, very little uh, of anything to help themselves, and then to sit back and watch them uh, just be mistreated. You know, there's nothing more hurtful to God than that. And so we need to be praying for our kids and fighting for our kids in the Spirit. And I believe that if we will pray God's prayers and God's heart, then... Uh, then we can see results and we want to see results. Amen. So let's just read some scriptures, build our faith on God's heart for kids. Then we're going to pray and uh, let's do this. Amen. Amen. I want to read Psalm 78. Psalm 78. I'm just going to read scriptures today. Give ear, O my people, to my law. Incline your ears to the words of my mouth. I will open my mouth in a parable. I will utter dark sayings of old, which we have heard and known, and our fathers have told us. We will not hide them from their children. That's a commitment that they're making. Telling to the generation to come the praises of the Lord and His strength and His wonderful works that He has done. That's a commitment. We're not going to hide it from our children. We're going to tell them. For he, God, established a testimony in Jacob. He appointed a law in Israel, which he commanded our fathers, that they should make known to their children, that the generation to come might know. God cares about the generation to come. The children who would be born, that they may arise 
and declare to their children, God has a vision for the children being born now, that they will arise and declare to their children that they may set their hope in God and not forget the works of God, but keep His commandments and may not be like their fathers, a stubborn, rebellious generation, a generation that did not set its heart aright, whose spirit was not faithful to God. Hallelujah. Does God care about kids? Read your Bible. Look at Noah. Noah was born. He was a baby, obviously, when he was born. And yet his parents, his mother saw something on him. He, she could see the favor of God. She could see the hand of God. And it gave her faith to um, put her own life on the line, protect that baby, not put him out to die, protect him, and pray for him and saved his life and we know the rest of the story Noah 80 years later how long later 80 years was his mother still around to see the the fulfillment of what God was doing in her when she protected him no 80 years later came back to start his ministry and lead the people of Israel out of Egypt to the promised land Jesus was born into the earth in crazy times and uh, was divinely protected. God sent angels to, to speak to the wise men. God sent angels to speak to Mary, to speak to Joseph, to speak to shepherds. All sorts of prophetic movement around a baby. Why? Because uh, God had a purpose for him. Hallelujah. But not the whole world knew about Jesus at that time. Not the whole world had knew who he was or what he was going to do at that time. God was divinely protecting that baby because of the call on his life. Hallelujah. So God has a call on every baby that comes into the earth and on this generation. And he wants to prophetically move in this generation and literally prophetically help and protect babies even today. And, uh, like I've said in the past, you're not going to hear anything about that on CNN or even watching it on Christian News or even Fox News. You're not going to hear about what God is doing. We need to go after it because God said to go after it. We need to go after it by faith. And then in a, in, when we get into heaven one day, God will show you the, the, the effect of these prayers. Hallelujah. Amen. So I believe you know that. Let me go. Um, so he said he established a law. That we should tell our children. Let's go read that law. It's in Deuteronomy uh, chapter 4, but let's read it from chapter 11. Deuteronomy chapter 11 and verse 19. I love this scripture. Love it. Deuteronomy 11, 19. You shall teach them to your children. Well, verse 18. Therefore you shall lay up these words of mine in your heart and in your soul. Bind them as a sign on your hand and they shall be as frontlets between your eyes. You shall Teach them to your children, speaking of them when you sit in your house, when you walk by the way, when you lie down, and when you rise up. Hallelujah. So we're supposed to be teaching our children. Uh, you know, before leaving Houston, we had applied to put our daughter in a really great school. Um, and she had gotten in as a private school, an international school. And uh, so, before, so when COVID hit and the lockdown and everything, uh, they were doing orientation meetings online to prepare us for the coming school year. And in, that, in those meetings, they were boasting about, and boasting in a good way, but boasting about uh, how quickly of a turnaround they did as a school when everything shifted. And within, when, when everybody was sent home, when everything was locked down, within 24 hours, they had the kids in online school and learning and continuing to learn. Why were they talking about that? Because they knew that if you're applying, you're getting your kids into private school, if somebody's willing to pay twenty-five dollars or $30,000 a year to put their kids into kindergarten, then you care about your kids' education. So they were telling us how, how much to them it was this important that their kids didn't lose but 24 hours of growing time. And they're not going to, so they're not going to lag by going to that school. They're not going to fall behind. Why are they sharing this? Because they know that people care about their children's education. So this was a, this was a, the secular world putting this much effort into children's education. And, uh, you know, I, I can't say, but it's heart, it hurts my heart 
to say that I don't think that the church did the same thing, or very, very, very few churches did the same thing in ensuring that we would continue to invest into our kids even though there was shifts going on in the world, that we cared that much about the spiritual growth of our kids, that we wouldn't let more than 24 hours go by, that we're going to make sure to do whatever we need to do to make, make to keep feeding our kids. So anyways, that's just a sad commentary, but it, that the world understands these principles and that we, we are glad that the private schools that we send our kids to do their best to make sure that our kids don't fall behind. But our job is first to make sure that they're growing in the spirit. Amen? It's good to have a good education and we want our kids to have a good education. But how much more that they're getting the word of God? Amen? How much more that they're being um, taught the things of God? Hallelujah. So that's why God literally put it in his law. He taught the people of Israel. Teach your children. Write, meditate on this word day and night. Put it on your head. Put it on your fore, your wrists. Write it on the doorpost of your house. And then teach your children. Speaking to them when you sit in your house. When you walk by the way. When you lie down. When you rise up. It should be a part of your lifestyle. That you're teaching your kids the things of God. And in Psalm 78 we read specifically what, what we're to be teaching them. But we're speaking to them the praises of the Lord. We're speaking to them the things that God has done. Amen? Hallelujah. So these things, just to refresh us, we're going to keep reading more scriptures. But God cares about kids. And He actually is very intentional. And we're supposed to be very intentional about teaching our kids, raising our kids in the fear and admonition of the Lord. Hallelujah. And that's why today, before we're done, in about eight minutes... We're going to pray, and we're going to pray for the kids of this nation and the kids around the world. We're going to pray for the unborn. We're going to pray for this generation. We're going to pray for the pushing back of the forces of darkness. We're going to pray for those in authority because they have everything to do with this, uh, with the atmosphere and the climate that our kids grow up in. Amen. We're going to pray for the churches. We're going to pray for our church leaders. Hallelujah. And I believe... Uh, and, and we're saying these things, again, I'm, this has everything to do with personal revival, but morning is June, we're praying today, and uh, we're talking about personal revival, but we're talking about going after um, the things that God cares about. And if, we care, if you care about what God cares about, then you're going to have the love of God flowing through you, the power of God flowing through you, the life of God flowing through you. If we're just living for ourselves and only ever praying about our own little things. If my vision is just as big as me, you know, I want a bigger car, I want a bigger house, that's great. There's nothing evil uh, in those things in and of themselves. But when, I, my, my, when my vision is, is the world, when my vision is generations, when my vision is reaching hundreds of thousands or millions of people, then I'm going to need a lot more than just a nice car for me and a nice house for me. There, that's great. Jesus said, seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. All these other things would be added unto you. You know, Jessica and myself, we need way more than, like that, that stuff is minimal. That stuff is like, we can't even care about that stuff anymore because that, that's too small. We're asking God for millions of dollars. We're asking God for grace to reach hundreds of thousands and millions of people. And uh, our little needs is just, I mean, that stuff... We can't care about that. That stuff is minimal. That stuff is already taken care of. We're going after big trucks. We're going after big fields. We're going after big vision, big dreams, big crowds. And it's not selfish ambition. It's because that's what God wants. Hallelujah. And so if we go after what God wants, then you're going to get the fullness of God. Hallelujah. And, and we're, we, yesterday we talked about making His priorities my priorities, get, determining to get the mind of Christ. And today... The mind of Christ that we're getting is the importance of kids. And so we're reading scriptures about kids. God cares about kids. And then we're going to pray for this generation. Amen. Um, go to, let's read Matthew 18. Matthew 18, I'm going to read this. We're going to read Matthew 19 and then we're going to pray. But I'm just going to talk about Luke chapter 2. You know, when Jesus was born, another thing that happened. Actually, this started to happen way back in the, in the, in the garden 
is God prophesied that there would be a baby that would come. And that's why the devil hates babies. That's why abortion is so big because he just wants to snuff them out before they're before they even breathe their first breath. He is afraid of every single baby because he looks at every baby as a potential David, a potential Jesus, a potential Paul, a potential Deborah, a potential Esther. And he is just terrified. He's experienced uh, great men and women of God throughout the ages and he hates them and he hates being whipped by them. And he's afraid that any, every, every baby that comes through the womb, he just knows they could just whip me at any point and I'm afraid of them. And he does everything he can to wipe them off the planet. And that's why we hate him, because he is the devil and we hate what he does. Amen? But I already mentioned, you know, there was so much prophetic stuff surrounding Jesus' birth. But we're going to read here in a minute that actually angels are around every single baby and every child on the planet. There's prophetic movement potentially happening for every baby. That's why we need to pray for them. Um, but one of the other things that you see when Jesus was born is when, eight, when he was eight days old, they brought him to the temple to present him according to the law. And you see two people pipe up. One was Simeon and one was Anna. And both Simeon had been, the Holy Spirit had shown him that he was going to see the Messiah and um, I don't know what he thought when he when he heard the Holy Ghost say that. I don't know if he thought he saw he was going to see a champion come in on a white horse or a great political leader. But what I believe is that he heard that and then he prayed that. He said, God, I'm hanging on to that. I'm prophesying that. And he wasn't the first one. All the prophets, all the law and the prophets were prophesying about this Messiah that would come. And every prayer that would that was that would pray God's heart was praying for this hallelujah for thousands of years they were praying for this what is my point is that even though they didn't see it come to pass their prayers were powerful and they had a part in in ushering in the kingdom of God so Simeon at some point God downloaded into him that he was going to see the Messiah and he agreed with that prayer he agreed with that prayer he prayed he prayed he prayed all of these prayers had to do with Jesus birth and then Anna same thing she came in and she prophesied over this baby so Simeon somehow when he saw the baby though he knew wow this is what I was waiting for I can die I've seen the salvation of the Lord but he was seeing a baby you get it so my point being is that they were praying God's will, but they were praying, Lord have mercy, I wish we would look, get this. What we're praying today, we have to just believe that we receive it because it might be a hundred years down the road before these babies grow up and do these marvelous things that we're praying, but we're going to pray for them now. Amen? And one day they'll come back and say, oh, thank you for praying that prayer because uh, it helped the government make a wise decision. It helped my parents not abort me. It helped my school teacher to tell me about Jesus and I became the man or the woman of God and did this and did that. But if you hadn't have prayed that prayer back in on July 30th, 2020, um, then I may have been aborted or I would have died or my parent, this would have happened, that would have happened. Amen. Hallelujah. Let's pray. Uh, that Matthew 18, we're going to read some more scriptures, then we're going to pray in two minutes. Matthew 18, at that time the disciples came to Jesus saying, Who then is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven? Jesus called who? A little child. Said him in the midst of them, said, Assuredly, I say to you, unless you are converted, become as little children, you'll by no means enter the kingdom of heaven. Kids are so important. Whoever humbles himself as this little child, so we can learn so much from children, is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven. Whoever receives one little child like this in my name receives me. Hallelujah. When we pray for these kids, when we receive them, when we minister to them, Jesus takes it personally. Verse 10, take heed that you do not despise one of these little ones. How many? One. The one in the jungle, the one in Africa, the one that's handicapped, the one in the womb. For I say to you that in heaven their angels always see the face of my Father who is in heaven. And the Son of Man has come to save that which was lost. Hallelujah. That's a very famous verse. That the Son of Man has come to save that which was lost. But what is it linked to? Literally here he's talking about children. Hallelujah. Babies, kids. 
and of course we're all kids in his eyes, but uh, we're talking about children today. Hallelujah. But there's a lot of prophetic movement and prophetic potential in praying for children. Hallelujah. Matthew 19, and then we're going to pray. Verse 13, little children were brought to Jesus that he might put his hands on them and pray, but the disciples rebuked them. Isn't that amazing? But Jesus said, let the little children come to me. Do not forbid them, for of such is the kingdom of heaven. And he laid his hands on them and departed there. And you can read the similar account in Mark 4. I'm just going to read it, just because faith comes and we're going to pray. Mark, uh, excuse me, Mark chapter 10, verse 13, and then Luke 18. I'm just going to read it. Hallelujah. What are we doing today? We're getting the heart of God. Uh, when you have the heart of God and you pray the prayers of God, then the fire of God, the power of God can flow through you. Mark 10 said, They brought little children to him that he might touch them, but the disciples rebuked those who brought them. But when Jesus saw it, he was greatly displeased and said to them, Let the little children come to me. Do not forbid them, for of such is the kingdom of God. Hallelujah. Praise God. And then Luke chapter 18, verse 15, says it this way, then we're going to pray. Hallelujah. Thank you, God. Luke 18, 15, Let the little children come to me. Do not forbid them, for of such is the kingdom of God. Assuredly, I say to you, whoever does not receive the kingdom of God as a little child will by no means inherit it. So we're just reading these scriptures today to remind ourselves and receive the heart of God. And... Um, and I, I want to pray for personal revival for anybody and everybody listening. May the heart of God fill you. May the love of God fill you. But I want to exhort us, which I've been talking about yesterday and today, is that uh, we can experience God in a church service. We can get stirred up from time to time. But if we want to live a life of revival, a huge key is opening ourselves up to, to really falling in love with what He loves, caring about what He cares being passionate about what he's passionate about. And one of the things that he cares very much about is our children, our children's children, the generation, the weak, the poor, those who, can't, those who don't have a voice to speak for themselves. And he wants us to pray for them. And I believe that as we pray what he's passionate about, then he comes and he fills us. Amen? Amen. I know you guys are amening because I'm preaching to the choir, but let's pray. Jesus said, if two or three of us are gathered together, uh, he is here in our midst. And uh, so let's pray. Let's close our eyes. Let's forget about everything. And uh, we're going to pray in faith, believing. You know, we live in a world that, that is, <laughs> you know, I, I, bear, I don't watch the news. So I don't even, I'm not even aware of all the darkness that's going on in the world. I don't, I don't want to be necessarily, but, um, but I know that there's great darkness and uh, the ones that are affected the most are the poor, the weak, the children, the kids, the unborn. And so, you know, we could pray for the rich and the mighty and the strong, and that's great, and I do pray for them. But I believe that if today we'll pray for the weak, the poor, the hurting, the lost, the children, the unborn, those without a voice, God hears these prayers because He cares about them. Amen? And He has angels surrounding them. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Praise God, and we got to fight for them. Let's pray. Father, thank you for your goodness. Thank you for this day. God, I thank you that you hear us always. I thank you, God, we come believing that you are, and you are the rewarder of those who diligently seek you. God, we are hungry for you, and we open up ourselves, Lord, to be passionate about what you're passionate about, to love what you love, and God, you love kids. And today, God, we come in faith, believing that you are and you're the rewarder of those who diligently seek you. All we can do, Lord, is pray in faith and then go out and, and show us our part, Lord. Show us in our daily lives. Show us in ministering to our own kids, ministering to our neighbors, ministering to the kids of the church. Um, uh, you know, our, using our gifts, our talents, whatever they are, Lord. Even if it's just, even if for the people who their talent is to make money, Lord, may they make plenty of money and fund the gospel, Lord. For the ministers that are called to lead your church, we pray for them, Lord, that they would have the grace and the power to lead your sheep where you want them, Lord. And Lord, those that are called into kids' ministry, into creating platforms, to leading children, youth, 
teenagers, young people, young adults or college age students, uh, university uh, students, Lord, those that are called into those ministries, Lord, we just uplift them right now. Those that have a, a voice even now, Lord, may it grow. May they walk in power. May they walk in authority. May they walk in virtue, Lord. May they walk in purity. May they love your word, Lord. May they discern the times. May they hear the call to arms, Lord. May they hear your voice, Jesus. May they receive blueprints from heaven, Lord. Lord, you know what is happening now, but you also know what will happen in a week from now and a year from now and 10 years and 50 years from now, Lord. You know how to prepare, God. We pray for the children even now, Lord, even those that are not born, God. We pray for those even that are wombs, in wombs even now, Lord. We pray for the young girl right now, God, who's tempted to, to even end the baby's life, to commit abortion. We come against those things in the name of Jesus. We come against spirits of murder in this nation in the name of Jesus. We pray for all those in authority, Lord, in this nation. We pray for lawmakers. We pray for our judges. We pray for our president, vice president. Lord, we pray for uh, uh, presidents of universities and colleges, Lord, for presidents of in, even uh, um, hospitals and the medical industry, Lord. We pray for the, the leaders in pharmaceutical industry and, Lord, and in the media. God, we pray in your mercy and in your help, God, for a turn. We pray for um, an awakening, Lord. We pray that people would turn to you, turn to righteousness. We pray that there be people in all of these spheres of influence, Lord, that would be born again, Lord. But even those that, ref that aren't born again, Lord, you can put your hand on their heart. You can guide them in writing righteous laws, Lord, laws that will protect the unborn, laws that will give them wisdom, Lord, how to how to do things, how to make righteous judgments in the courthouses, Lord. We pray for the young ladies, Lord, those that are hurting, those that are scared, God. We pray for mercy. We pray even for individual girls, even right now, Lord, that are struggling, uh, tempted to give up their babies, God. We pray for miraculous intervention, prophetic movement in their lives, Lord, uh, stirring of angels, moving of angels, Lord. Speak to them, uh, send labors across their path, Lord. May those babies be saved. May those babies be born. May they come out healthy and whole, sound-minded, protected even from drug abuse, protected from abuse, molestation, Lord. Uh, those that even need to go into homes, Lord, be um, uh, adopted into healthy homes, Lord. Grace, Christians, to rise up, Lord, and adopt babies, to raise up babies in the fear and the admonition of the Lord. God, we come back praying to praying for those who are called into children's ministry, youth ministry, to lead uh, young people, to raise, to plant churches, Lord, to do missions, and we pray for them, Lord. Give them blueprints, Lord. Empower them with your Holy Ghost, Lord. May they know what they need to do now. May they have a word that is powerful now that touches lives now, Lord. May they see, may they walk in your passion, walk in your heart, walk in your power. May they rightly divide your word, Lord. But again, I, Lord, I just pray you download blueprints into them. Blueprints from heaven that line up with what you're doing in the earth and what you're going to do in the earth. May they not just be led by the flesh, led by tradition, led by being conformed to this world. Lord, may there be powerful men and women of God who are sanctified and set apart by your hand, by your heart, by your ways and by your word and empowered to do supernatural, powerful things, Lord, to create powerful platforms for kids, young people, to run to, to plant churches where they can run to, where they can hear your word, where they can be sanctified, where they can be protected from the onslaught of the enemy, and, and grow up in a powerful way, powerfully imparted into. Oh, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father. We pray for the pastors today, Lord. The pastors of our churches across this nation and around the world, Lord. Good morning, Miss Madeline. Just praying for the kids in this generation right now. We're praying for the pastors, Lord, the leaders. And I thank you, Lord, that that uh, when the leaders don't step up, that you will raise up new leaders, that you even right now, we need more leaders. So even if they step up, Lord, uh, we pray for up-and-coming leaders. But Lord, for the churches right now, across this land and around the world, Lord, may they be safe havens for kids. Lord, give the, the pastors and the leaders wisdom. Wisdom how to lead their, their church how you would, God.
to protect the kids, to raise the kids up, not being conformed to this world, but being transformed into what you have called them to be, Lord. Thank you, God. 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 Thank you, Lord. 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 Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Shokoburo Bodadasti. Lord, we just open ourselves up to you today. Continue to flow through us, Lord. Continue to help us to pray in these lines, Lord. Help us to pray as we ought to pray. Well, Lord, we're going to end our prayers today, but we, I just you know, encourage everybody, I know all of you guys pray, uh, but to continue to pray in these lines. But we're not just going to pray vain prayers, God. We pray in faith. And so everything that we just prayed, God, and we open ourselves up to continuing to pray, show us how to pray, Lord. Show us uh, we take a stance in the Spirit. I know these amazing women right now that are with me now, I know they've already taken their stand. They're, gonna, they're living their life for, um, for you. But Lord, anybody who will watch in the future, God, every one of us, Lord, give us grace to take a, a lifetime stance of praying and pushing. And today we're praying specifically, Lord, for the children, for the unborn. And, uh, but we do, we pray for the leaders, the government, those who affect today's culture. Uh, for, we, we push back the powers of the enemy in Jesus' name. But we're going to finish our prayers today in faith, God. Believing that you are moving. Thank you for the salvation of kids. Thank you that they'll even, as a result of praying today, Jesus' name, that there'll be women who will not abort their children, that those babies will be born, that there are churches being planted here in the United States and around the world, missionaries being sent out to bring the gospel to the unsaved world to establish great and powerful works where children will be brought up in the fear and in the admonition of the Lord. Thank you that there are children's pastors that are being birthed into the earth. The gifts, Lord, you're pouring out glory gifts. You're pouring out powerful blueprints into the earth, even into young people, even into college age students. That you're, you're putting ministries inside of them. And Lord, we pray for those young people, Lord, that that you're putting something inside of them that is new, that, that maybe has never even been done quite like that before, Lord. Give them grace to live those things out, to pray those things out, and to be who you called them to be, and not, not feel like they have to try and be like anybody else, but just do what you called them to do. Pray even for Joshua today. But uh, Lord, thank you that you're doing that. In Jesus' name, amen. Hallelujah. Glory to God. <laughs> Woo, thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Once you start, you just want to keep going. But well, we're going to end there for today. Thank you for joining us. Hey, good morning, Mr. Mentuts. <laughs> That's a Mark Cortez. Good morning, Mark. We're just finishing up. I do want to... Um, I want to give... You know, you guys know us, but I'm, this is also for anybody who will watch in the future. Give anybody who'd like opportunity to sow into the kingdom today. We talked about kids. We talked about prayer. When you invest yourself into what God is doing, it, you hit a gusher. You hit a wellspring of life. So that's why when you pray for the, what God is passionate about, then He fills you. When you go after what He's giving you to do in the earth, something fills you whether it's in your career whether it's in parenting whether it's in business he fills you hallelujah uh, when we when we care about the lost god cares about the lost he's going to fund the gospel before the gospel will go on forever google will not amazon will not i'll prophesy that i don't you know they could go on another 100 years or another two weeks you and i don't know shell oil company will not go on forever people you know People put all their stock into it and just assume, believe these things are so powerful. They'll go on, those will not go on forever. But I know what will go on forever, the gospel. The gospel. Uh, God cares about the lost. That's why uh, someone in the jungle somewhere with little to no education, God will take care of them because they're going after the lost. But this rich person with all the education in the world over here that's just living for themselves, 
uh, God can do very little for. Amen? The gospel will go forth. It'll go to the ends of the earth. And uh, so when people go after the lost, God is in it. When people go after kids, God is on it. Praise God. And uh, when people, uh, one of the ways that we go after it is in our giving. Uh, where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. In other words, there's a direct link uh, in our money. And uh, so I do want to give you an opportunity to give. Uh, I always Im encourage everybody, of course, give into your church first. Tithing uh, in your local community. Tithing uh, is, very, is, is just biblical. Every single Christian gives. But um, to where God is feeding you, the prophets and, and priests in your life, uh, the poor, taking care of the poor, um, and the local church. And, and pray for your local church. Uh, it should be going after souls, should be going after the kids, should be uh, impacting the world around them. Amen? And so do that. But if you want to be a part of what we're doing, you are welcome to do that. Go to thejesustours.com. You can give through PayPal, through Cash App. And then, like I said last week, we're working on our P.O. Box. That should be solidified today. So that'll show up on the website as well. Hallelujah. And uh, when you give in to the gospel, in, from your heart, you know, just people giving out a compulsion, condemnation, don't, don't do that. But when God speaks to you to give, whether it's here or anywhere else, give on purpose, but it's your heart that's giving. Give um, because your heart wants to be a part of that. Hallelujah. And when you do, when you, when you release the gift, whatever it is, you're connecting with that anointing and you're joining that flow. It's very, very powerful. Hallelujah. And so expect that. Expect that flow in your life. Whether it's, like I talked about last week, the power to advance the kingdom. That's what we're about. We're about advancing the kingdom. That's why we connect. We're connected to ministries that are advancing the kingdom forcefully because we want to more forcefully uh, um, advance the kingdom. And it's like a, it's like a, a pipeline. We came to Florida on purpose because we want to advance the kingdom forcefully, but we know we need more force. And so we came along other ministries that are forcefully, you know, uh, advancing the kingdom in a more forceful and powerful way than us. And we hook in and we hook in, we hooked in by coming and listening, but also in our giving. And when we do, it's like, it's like you hook into that pipeline and you get to jump in on that flow. Praise God. Hallelujah. All right. Been 40 minutes time for me to go make breakfast for my family let me pray one more time just for you God thank you for Miss Kimberly thank you for Mark and Chris the Cortezes for Miss Madeline for Miss June and uh, for anybody and everybody else watching God just thank you and I know these guys have a heart to see your kingdom advanced I pray for a spirit of advancement upon their lives I pray for their husbands their wives and their children Lord um, uh, move of your spirit in their life, prophetic movement in their lives. Um, uh, I pray they, they see breakthroughs, Lord. I, I pray a rising up like when r water comes under a boat that they would experience rising up in their life, always moving forward. I pray for the infilling of the Holy Ghost. May they be full today, full, 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 strong, strong, Give them prophetic utterance, Lord, when they go about. Give them words to speak to people. Uh, prophetic words, Lord, what to know, uh, what to pray over their own lives, over their finances, uh, over their future, over their kids, Lord. And uh, I, we come into agreement with them, Lord, what, what you give them to speak. Even, uh, I know Miss Kimberly today, he's going to give you a word, something to say over your family. And we agree with those things in Jesus' name. I pray over their finances, Lord. Breakthrough, breakthrough, increase in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, blessing on you guys. Uh, we love you. Next Saturday, we're going to do a meeting. Uh, let me confirm with them first. But next Saturday, we're going to do a special uh, Zoom meeting where we'll get to see people face to face. We'd love for each of you guys to be there. Um, uh, and then we'll invite anybody else and others who, are, who, who know us personally, but anyone who wants in. And we're going to have a special, Miss Kimberly, you know them, a special couple from Italy on, a missionary couple. Uh, they're going to be on to impart into us. So uh, be watching for that next Saturday. That'll be really fun.
All right, love you guys so much. Wish I could hug each one of you. Have a great day today. Bless you.